Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to Step 2 in our Three Steps to Gladiator for Fire Mage series. Before we go any further, if you missed Step 1, be sure to go back and watch that first. If you've already seen it, then you're in the right place. Step 2 is all about preparing for PvP, including how you should be min-maxing your damage, and then we'll be covering how to make the most out of your crowd control that you have at your disposal. So, let's get started. As a DPS, knowing how to deal the maximum damage is essential, but knowing the basics is also very important. Fire Mage's damage arsenal consists of Fireball, Fireblast, Pyroblast, Scorch, Meteor, and Greater Pyroblast if you opt to play it. Fire's general damage rotation is honestly quite simple, but Fire is all about getting crowd control and then doing your instant burst damage at the right time, or when playing with Greater Pyroblast, looking to land the G Pi and then unloading your instant burst damage. Before we get into burst damage, how do you do your sustained damage as a fire mage? Well, fire mage's damage outside of burst, aka your consistent damage, is extremely low, and is one of the major weaknesses of fire mage. In your downtime, you're going to be doing two things. If you're playing with greater pyroblast, it's obviously going to be looking to land graters. If you're playing with the standard fireball spec, then you'll be spamming fireballs to reset the cooldown on your combustion. Burst, however, is what fire's all about, and your burst revolves around using all your instant damage that's coming from Pyroblast and Fireblast combined with your Meteor. To burst, you're going to first aim to have a Pyroblast ready from Hot Streak. Then you will want to aim your Meteor on the target, ideally with them stunned, follow this up instantly with Combustion, combined with any on-use trinkets or racials you may have, and Memory of Lucid Dreams if you're playing it. And then you're going to rotate between Pyroblast into Fireblast into Pyroblast into Fireblast. Whilst Combustion is up, your Pyroblast will all be critical strikes, meaning you can pump out an insane amount of instant damage. Now, if you're playing with Greater Pyroblast, you will start your rotation with one of these. This means if you land a Greater on the enemy target, you should then follow it up with the burst rotation from above. As Fire, there is a few things that might not be obvious. Firstly, is that Fire Blast is not on the global cooldown and can be used whilst casting your abilities. This means you can combo things like Fireball into Pyroblast with two Fire Blasts during your cast, giving you some quick burst damage. This is also very useful for doing things like killing Grounded Totems, mid Polymorph, or even mid Greater Pyroblast cast. This is also the case for Combustion. Combustion is also not on the global cooldown, and thanks to the travel time of Meteor, you're able to pop Combustion whilst Meteor is still in the air. When playing with the talent Seer in Touch, your Scorch will be a guaranteed critical strike when the target is below 30% health. This means you can combo it with Fire Blast during the cast to ensure you gain hot streaks and helping you finish off targets. Now a common question is when do you use Living Bomb? Well, to put it simply, the ability deals extremely weak damage, but its main drawback is that it can potentially break crowd control. So the only time I would ever recommend losing Living Bomb is when you know for a fact that the target is not going to break any form of crowd control on the enemy healer. Now, we've got a good understanding of Fire Mage's damage. Let's now talk about crowd control. As for Fire, setting up crowd control before you burst is key to setting up and scoring kills. Fire has some of the strongest crowd control in game, and some of the easiest to land thanks to Fire providing Dragon's Breath. Starting with the most notable and recognisable crowd control in the game, we of course have Polymorph. Now this has two uses. First is aiming to secure a Polymorph on the healer. This is best done with the use of Shimmer, giving you the ability to blink while still casting. 
landing polymorphs against skilled players can often be hard, so any help from your team in the form of a stun can also be of great help. You also, as fire, have Dragon's Breath of course to help you land polymorphs that little bit easier. Although when going for polymorphs, you should always be aware when up against druids and priests. Druids can shift into forms to avoid your polymorph, and priests can use their ability Premonition to break the polymorph after the initial cast. The second use of polymorph is defensively. You may find times in games where either you or your team is in trouble. Although disfallible, polymorph can be a great tool in peeling the enemy team, allowing you to survive that little bit longer. Ring of Frost is essentially an AoE polymorph on a different school of magic. Ring of Frost is obviously on Frost, whilst polymorph is on Arcane. The standard use of Ring of Frost is when facing Druids, as you can still land a Ring of Frost out of a stun if they're in any of their forms. You can also use Ring of Frost as a tool to cross crowd control. For instance, you could polymorph a DPS and then Ring of Frost a healer. As fire, Ring of Frost is also extremely powerful as you can easily land it out of a dragon's breath, and also essentially gives you free crowd controls on three different schools of magic. Dragon's Breath is extremely strong. It's a 4 second disorient that's on the same diminishing return as Cyclone, Blind and other fear effects, meaning it doesn't DR with Polymorph. This is why Fire is mainly paid with a Holy Paladin and not a Restoration Druid, unlike its Frost counterpart. Dragon's Breath is super impactful for Fire, as it gives you a tool to easily secure either Polymorph or Ring of Frost solo as you can simply Dragon's Breath a healer, followed up with either CC. The other use of this ability is to extend crowd control chains. Say you landed 3 polymorphs on the enemy healer, you can then finish it off with Dragon's Breath, extending your crowd control that extra 4 seconds. And our last use is simply as a tool to either interrupt Kai casts or kite melee cleaves, so defensively. There is many situations you'll find yourself having to use Dragon's Breath, to escape melee or for important casts such as enemy destruction warlocks chaos bolts. Fire Mage doesn't have the same slows and ability to kite with Novas as Frost does. As Fire, you have no slow outside of your flame strike, but you do have one single Nova. This means use of it needs to be on point. You rarely have the luxury of Nova in healers to ensure CC when up against cleaves. It's always best to use as roots on enemy melee cleaves to prevent them from connecting. Interchange it with Polymorph to cover Dispels so the enemy melee has to either sit a full Polymorph or a full Frost Nova. Our final form of crowd control mages have access to is of course their Counterspell. Now this can obviously be used multiple ways. First is just as a way to stop heals, creating more pressure for you and your team. Just an extra way to extend your crowd control chain once more. Next is peeling for your team. So what I mean by this is stopping important casts like Chaos Bolts, Greater Pyroblasts or even Vampiric Touches. And then the final use is stopping crowd control. This can be offensively or defensively. Stopping an opposing mage's polymorph during your own setup can often more than not be more impactful than counterspelling the healer for instance. Alright then guys, that brings us to the end of step 2 of our 3 steps to Gladiator for Fire Mage. Make sure to be on the lookout for step 3 where we give you a breakdown of compositions and your goals once you actually get into the arena. 